now let's talk about what Bangladesh is facing, in addition to the, um, the hundreds of thousands of uh, Rohingya coming in. And that is the issue of climate change. I mean, you come into this country. I know you're speaking at the Brooklyn Public Library tonight. Yeah. Um, you come into this country, you see the catastrophe, the climate catastrophe in Puerto Rico, um, Florida, Texas, these hurricanes incoming more frequently, more intense. Um, a third of your country, Bangladesh, is underwater? You said all the words that I was about to say. Uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable that uh, this country, uh, which is a flat country, by the way, it's uh, uh, one fourth of the country is just about one meter above the sea level. So if the global warming takes is as it takes place, uh, sea level rises, Bangladesh just slides into the sea. And so this is the position that every year you are getting more and more uh, into the sea than uh, we were before. And it's a very tightly packed country. In a small territory of 150,000, uh, 150 million people, <coughs> sorry, 150 million, uh, 150,000 square kilometers, we have 160 million people. So it's more than uh, 1,000 people per square mile of the whole country. Uh, it's the most densely populated country in the world. So if land goes into the water, uh, your land uh, becomes uncultivable, you cannot grow food for yourself, and you have to leave your territory, uh, land that you used to leave. Uh, so it's becoming a situation where we will have um, hundreds of thousands of uh, climate refugees moving around to find shelter for ourselves. On top of it, you have the new refugees coming from Burma uh, to find shelter with us. So the, these are happening not because Bangladesh is doing something wrong for the climate uh, situation or worsening the climate situation. It's because happening, something is happening somewhere else, and it's coming to us. And the floods that you mentioned, floods, is, uh, we used to know flood. But now the, the, the feature of the flood is it's more frequent and more intensive. So how does it feel to come to a country, the United States, where the president, uh, President Donald Trump, um, has denied climate change, called it a Chinese hoax, pulled the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Accord? It's unbelievable. We can't believe that the president of the United States can say such, such a thing. It took us more than 40 years of global mobilization, making people aware what the amazing thing this planet, planet uh, climate change is, and it soon will be reaching the point of no return. Even if we try, we cannot save the planet anymore. So we all got together, finally, all the countries got together in Paris to sign the Paris Agreement. And Today, that Paris Agreement exists, but suddenly, uh, President of the United States says we are withdrawing from that Paris Agreement. It takes away the whole thrust of the uh, movement that uh, built up around the world. So we are very unhappy and very, very disappointed that uh, that such a position is taken. I hope the uh, U.S. will review that position and go back to Paris Agreement and give the full throat uh, support to it so that it makes it happen. A uh, country like China is uh, going mo moving ahead, India is moving ahead. The countries, people suspected that they will not agree to the <coughs> Paris Agri Agreement or any kind of uh, attempt to save the planet from the global warming, because they want to develop the country first before they get into all these issues. Well, they are the ones that are now taking the leadership role, where the United, United States is withdrawing from that. We'll be broadcasting from Paris tomorrow from UNESCO headquarters, where I'm going to be speaking. But you wrote a book, A World of Three Zeros, The New Economics of Zero Poverty, Zero Unemployment, and Zero Net Carbon Emissions. Yes, you, this book comes out at a time what Oxfam came out with that report. The eight richest men in the world own more wealth than half the world's population, yes. more than three and a half billion people. Mm -hmm. uh, but talk about zero net carbon emissions, zero poverty. Uh, all these three have to be achieved. This is, there is no option for us. And I just lay down, this is, this is something. But the system which we have been practiced, the capitalist system, I said capitalist system is not working towards it. Uh, it's, it's a system which, as you mentioned, the eight people owning more wealth than the bottom 50 percent of the people. It's a system which uh, is a, like a machine which is sucking up wealth from the bottom and transporting it to the top. So the top is becoming a big, big mushroom of wealth. And then 99 uh, percent of the people is like the stem from the mushroom hanging there, and that uh, uh, stem is becoming thinner and thinner. Uh, the portion, uh, the wealth portion of the wealth uh, devoted to uh, bottom 99 or the 99 percent, uh, we don't say bottom anymore, uh, will become smaller. 
and relatively the top becoming bigger and bigger. Uh, I said, this is a, a ticking time bomb. Any time it can explode politically, socially, economically, and so on, we are not paying attention to it. Wealth concentration was going on ever since we introduced capitalist system, but we, this was not very visible. Today, it's becoming worse and worse. The speed of wealth concentration has become speedier and speedier. Years back, there was a couple of years back, there were 32 people who owned the half the wealth of the bottom 50 percent. And now we have eight. Soon we'll have five. Soon we'll have two. Two people owning the whole uh, entire world's uh, wealth together. So those are the kind of things that threaten it. If you when concentration of wealth takes place, it also the concentration of power. Wealth and power go together. So you control the government, you control the politics, you control the media, you control businesses, everything. So that's the kind of situation coming. And all the people at the bottom, bottom 10 percent, 20 percent, 50 percent, they will have tremendous anger against the way that's being done and how to express themselves. That will create the disastability in the society. Which is a perfect launching point for part two of our discussion, which we will post online at democracynow.org. Mohammed Yunus, uh, founder of the Grameen Bank, recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. His new book, A World of Three Zeros, The New Economics of Zero Poverty, Zero Unemployment and Zero Net Carbon Emissions. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.